Hello V, hello V, hi. Hi, Godwin. Hello. You can you can press the button to speak. Hello. Yeah, I just want to check if everything is okay. Yeah, I can hear you, Godwin. Okay, Johnny, I will just be on listening, okay? Yes. If you want to speak, just raise your hand and I can unmute you. Sure. Let's wait, wait for more, a couple of minutes for a special guest to join now and for more people to join.
Okay, since we have our two special guests here, we will start within five minutes. Okay, the wait is finally over, so let's get started. Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second Star Crazy Dow meeting tonight. Of course, this is Johnny speaking as the host of this meeting. At the beginning of this meeting, guys, feel free to send your address and name to our ambassadors who will collect your information for follow-up reward distribution. And also, feel free to DM me for verification, given too many scammers these days. Remember always to do your own research. So since we have arms in the house, we get uh, crypto fancy in the house, we even get rate, rate in the house. So. Everybody is here, so let's get started. As you can see, there are two special guests joining us tonight. Arndt, who is a marketing and promotion master. So Arndt, could you say hello to our Star Crazy Towers, please? Hi, Arndt, are you, are you here, Arndt? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Arndt. Great to hear from you again. Hey, very 
everyone. Let me see if oh my camera. God. Yeah, it's wrong camera, but working. Uh, let me see. There we go. There we go. Yeah, good. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, this camera. All right, so uh, doing good, doing good. Very busy. So uh, working with lots of projects, uh, lots of Web three projects. Uh, we're constantly, uh, uh, we're constantly growing. Uh, working with Columbia University, working with their Web three accelerator. So. Uh, lots of chains involved, so I'm working on the project with Cosmos, Stellar, and a whole bunch of other slew of projects you probably heard of, uh, stocks and such. So yeah, so that's exciting. Uh, and yeah, I'm uh, also keeping an eye how the gaming space is developing. So glad that Star Crazy is, you know, doing pretty well actually comparatively to the rest of the space. And just good to be here. Oh yeah, well, one more announcement. Um, I'll be speaking at NFT NYC next month, so I think uh, I'll drop link later. So if you, I might actually be even on main stage, so uh, feel free to vote for that because I will be speaking on the gaming panel where I will be talking about Star Crazy as an example of a uh, crypto project and gaming project. So keep that in mind. Yeah, that that sounds exciting. That sounds exciting and interesting. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much, Art. Sure. And I will next introduce our next special guest. Thank you, thank you so much, Art. Let me turn myself off. Right. Okay, we got, and we also have Chris Polfridge in the house. We have seen him in a fusing workshop as a NFT fusing master. And also in the first star meeting as a strong star crazy supporter and lover. So hi Fridge, could you say hello to our Star Crazy fans? Hi Fridge. Hi Fridge. Hello Fridge. Hi Fridge, are you here? Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah, I can hear everyone. Good afternoon, yeah. Fridge. Yeah. Good to hear from you again. Yeah, it's it's been a while, and um, sorry guys that I can't turn on my my video. Um, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's a pleasure to to be here, and um, I'm happy that um, Star Crazy is growing every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, all the way from Nigeria, I am uh, pleased to be on board. And um, it's it's good to see Star Crazy evolving to become uh, something this beautiful. Um, I'm sure that the whole team and um, the whole of the supporters and the fans and um, players, everybody's looking forward to doing great things with Star Crazy. Yeah. So yeah. yeah I, I... Sorry, you wanted to say something, Johnny? Yeah, you, we we may expect to expand in. Africa, you know, bring Sakri to Africa, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, with the with the um, evolve evolving of AI all around the world, I'm I'm sure um, creativity can only increase. So uh, I, I'm looking for a lot of good stuff for Sakri, and um, my community has also been following up. I have a lot of people in my community that. That place that crazy and um, yeah, a lot, yeah, and even you know buying GFT and GFS just for um, investment purposes and all of that. So it's a it's a good one to be here. Yeah, good to see you. Also, my African friend, good to see you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Next, tonight we also have random GFS airdrops to audiences and random pops or proof of attendance protocols for speakers. You can look at the right side. Yeah, that is the special NFT reward designed in a special pixelated style. Its owner could enjoy above 
and maybe accessible to special activities in the future. Okay, let's take a look at our previous style proposals. Now here we can see our previous style proposals. The first one is to cut down GFT mining rewards to 1,000 with 87.23% voting yes. The second one is adjusting the original PVP reward scheme with 74% voting yes on the second option. So rewards will be settled every two weeks in the next PVP season. I believe passing those proposals is good for Star Crazy to run sustainably and well in the long term. Okay, so the bullshit. What we gonna talk about tonight? So our theme to talk about tonight is how to increase the income for active players. Of course, we will collect creative, crazy inspiring ideas from you regarding how to increase the income for active players. We more, so why should we do so? First, so, of course, hi, 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 Arm. Yeah, so be, before we get into the neat and nick of things, I think I want to talk a little bit, a few minutes about the uh, the whole space, you know, the crypto space and the the, the effects on it. So like well, I spoke recently at the Zynga conference right before Kevin O'Leary panel, actually. And uh, yeah, I want to make sure that, you know, we're, we don't like, uh, I think uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about energy. So I go to a lot of conference and events in crypto that are, you know, the pretty major ones. And I think uh, we all should, let me, I'll, I'll turn on my camera because it's, let me figure out how to properly set up at this time for a few minutes. So I just want to give everybody, because I see everyone is talking about always, you know, what is next and how is next will be. So, uh, cool, let me see. All right, so I think this is working. Yep, sorta, slightly edged. Uh, all right, so what is, right? What is, uh, what exactly are we doing? Like, what can we improve? What can we, uh, uh, achieve in this space and so to me we have to understand that there are see if I can, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have to understand that there, we are dealing with uh, overall market like if you look for through uh, psychologically through uh, all these downs we the FTX the Terra a number of other Celsius you name it SVB uh, for those who don't know uh, like Silicon Valley Bank you know is uh, even though it was major, the effect of depegging USDC could have had much more dire consequences. Thankfully, you know it was solved last weekend, but the it could be could have been real dire. So uh, I do believe it will have an effect on crypto system. Even though we're seeing right now rebound, I believe we're at least for next six months to nine months we're probably going to see some sort of down reversal because people are still kind of scared. Right now, they're kind of having euphoria that USDC gets stabilized, but ultimately the space tends to go very, very hot or very, very cold. And this is something that for everybody in crypto space, be that gaming, non-gaming, it was irrelevant because it's the same for everybody. It's uh, when the token is low, it's very, very low. When the token is hot, it's very, very hot. And in terms of marketing for all the projects I'm working with right now, I say, you know, right now it's being more about being steady. So you don't, you're not going to attract a lot of people because a lot of people are afraid. After FTX, there's a lot of fears, a lot of insecurities. And so we're, what we will see likely is people kind of being on the sidelines. And that's, that's why I think it's important to remember that it's more right now about building community, the loyal players and popular players here uh, are going to be the core elements and educators in the future up way. And I'm, strongly believe in upwave because I can see how many projects are being developed that are super interesting. Uh, for example, uh, one project I'm working as advisor is uh, it's creators uh, in Web2. So it's one of the largest in the world agencies in Web2 uh, that helps creators monetize their money, like, you know, earnings on YouTube. So they, they're earning your earnings and then getting 
and they taking uh, they helping uh, creators to better put ads and basically getting a better ROI on their investments. So they have thousands of creators, and we're right now moving them to Web3. Meaning, in the future, any creator will be able to go to their fans and say, "Hey, if you buy my token, and they'll be able to tokenize it, you can actually earn my future revenue." So if the creator makes hundred thousand dollars a year, they can tokenize fifty thousand, and they'll be able to sell the you know the growth of twenty percent maybe why to their traditional fans, which are a lot yeah, of them will go up three. Hi, on. So Hello, on. things like that are ha- happening behind the scenes, and uh, therefore I'm very very bullish on the space. But I have to just tell everybody, uh, you know, don't rush your horses. Like the right, the money. The growth right now will be limited as long as like the community is sustaining, as the players are motivated, as the active players continues to go. We like the likelihood is in the next up market, uh, when properly handled with marketing, you can grow 10x, 20x, 30x. Uh, so that would be that's my takeaway. That's it. That's how it would be my main point on the speaker. Yeah. Right? yeah, we just hold. We hold. We hold with hold, hold Jeff S and Jeff T with our diamond. Okay. Anybody have yeah. questions later, I guess, in the end, we can cover it. But, yeah, that's my view. All right. Yeah, thank you, Arne. Thank you, Arne. So why should we do to increase our PV active PvP or PvE players? Like, we can encourage them to play more PvE and PvP and make PvE and PvP battles more Interesting with more players fusing and buying stores. This way, we can boost up the Jeff T and Jeff S prices with more items and tokens being spent. We need more DAU. We need more tokens to be spent and burnt. We also can reduce the selling pressure for both tokens if we can create a sustainable economics. So I will leave the floor to you guys right now to discuss how or what we should do to increase the income for active players. Yeah, feel free to say whatever you want, and you can make us hear you. Let me adjust my screen. Okay, who wants to speak? You can raise your hand and speak out to let us hear you. Anyone? Do anyone get any ideas in terms of how can increase the uh, income for our active players? Yeah, we all we do want to increase more, uh, encourage more people to play. Start crazy, yeah. Hi, could you guys uh, hear me? Hi. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello, hello, guys. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Johnny. Hello, everyone. 
And I can see some of the participants would like to speak here. Hi, Kero. Hello, hello, my friend. How are you? Hello, all fam. I hope you are all doing good. Hello? Good, good, good. I can hear you. Yeah, uh, so uh, if you remember the first time we had this uh, kind of meeting on the space on Twitter, we talked about uh, the uh, price uh, distribution between all the players. If you remember, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, I was trying to fuse my stars uh, like from three weeks or or something like that. So I lost all my uh, good uh, stars. Uh, unfortunately, now I got like downgraded instead of upgrading them. So I'm uh, just like sitting on the three hundred between like two hundred fifty and three hundred rank on the participants of the every every time we. Do this uh, fighting thing with the stars, and the, the the rewards are really, really like not encouraging to play anymore. So I just like did few fights, and uh, I'm I'm never winning. So I'm just sitting like on the 300 now place, something like that, and it's like less than half GFT as a price. So I don't know if you you consider something about distribution the. Um, the rewards between the players, like in a fair way, especially for the low the levels. So, what you mean? What you mean, Gato, is to spread out the rewards for players at lower rank, at exactly. lower ranking. Exactly, exactly. For example, last time I told you, like, and you you already know that the uh, rank one he gets one thousand GFT. And rank two gets like something between 500 or something like that. And just like under the 50s, it's like, it's like really, really a trashy rewards. Sorry, man, but it's trashy rewards, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. That, will, that way will work if we can spread out the rewards for each and everyone to earn and play, right? Yeah, because it will be more encouraging if, if they will get uh, a little bit uh, more rewards. It will be more encouraging for new players to come and join, you know. But if they will get like half a GFT for every two weeks, no one will play this game, man. No, no one. Uh, only the big guys, the, the whales will, will play. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Gerdo Dom. Thank you so much for voicing out to let the team hear you. So, who wants to speak? If so, you just raise your hand and let me know. Hey, okay. let's go, Godwin. Godwin, you got something to say? Godwin, yes, uh, John. You... Yeah, yeah. Okay. You I... say... Yeah, I just want to ask you. Um, uh, we're talking about. Uh the GFT and GFS space, but also the PVE uh, and to increase uh, everyone. So uh, can you give me a percent, uh, percentage of the allocation, how many you are, uh, according to me, just eyeballing, I can see that the you are uh, more or less 10%, SSR 20%, and the the SRs of the planets is 70%. It's just eyeballing it. I didn't count it. So my point is everyone should be able to get a bite of the apple. The SSRs and the URs can have just a bigger bite in the sense that you, sh you guys should look at the way that we play the game and that everyone should be able, if you've got a planet, is be able to do everything that everyone can do. But let the ones that has got the bigger planets just have more of it uh, uh, than allowing the UR guys to build and, 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 
uh, get rewards of the the special uh, the ores and things like that. And the other guys have to now decide which way, one way or so. So they have to look at that and give everyone, but just spread it over the bigger piece. I agree with Ghetto, there must be incentive to play the game. Otherwise, uh, less and less people will play. Then also, uh, for setting rewards, uh, especially you know, in the training grounds, there should be a minimum and a maximum. Uh, no one should be able to uh, uh, get the game for uh, or let someone train for free and the other ones say, okay, 100 GFTs. There should be a limit and maybe we should vote on that. And then the third part is uh, uh, Kadesh. Uh, I want to speak to him that, uh, or not to him, but he sees to voice his concerns about the the bots that's on uh, the open market. Uh, why don't you just set a price uh, for the starting price? Uh, because a lot of people believe that maybe it's the it's been set by by uh, the devs. But I mean, you can get a starting price and then don't have to be bots or they have to control the bots. And that's quickly my 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 share. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm aware of the problem. Yeah, I do are aware of the problem. Um, you guys saw many bots uh, manipulating the market, but yeah, we will, we can put that on the table in our development meeting. Yes, uh, that will be considered. And also, Godwin, I think. Your ideas is uh, very similar to the one offered by Ghetto. Yeah, we may consider expanding the rewards to different players to provide incentives for them to really join and play our game, right? Yeah, no, but my opinion is about uh, the coming, the future. Uh... Uh, especially the planet holders, uh, it, it seems to me that the UR guys will have, while it's just ten percent of all the planets, will will be able to do more instead of let everyone do exactly the same thing, but let the other guy just get a bit, like I said, a bigger bite of the apple than the other guys. Give everybody the chance to explore all the functions of the planets and participate that way yeah yeah thank you thank you so much thank you so much godwin so who wants to speak next oh happy to see you tuan happy to see you joined our meeting hi on you can speak now hi on Hey guys, yeah. So, so I, I some solutions as well. So, a uh, few things. Uh, uh, I have a few friends who actually have couple, both of them have planets, and they're actually pretty active players. I, I play once in a blue moon, so I'm also occasionally player. But uh, because back in when I was learning about Star Crazy, and that's what helped me market it better, is playing it. So you know, I actually did participate, and so I'm talking from experience. But feedback from my two, two friends with planets, uh, the minor one, but kind of a feedback is basically when the planet upgrades, give larger capacity to store crystals. So that was one of my buddy who was like, because if you're upgrading planet, but it's still at a hundred, you're actually uh, inconveniencing people who are upgrading it. So may, maybe making 150 at level two, 200 at level three. So that when they're collecting it, they don't have to, do it every few hours or every 24 hours. So that was one feedback from him. <laughs> um, that is, uh, and uh, to solve the bigger issue for small planets. So somebody mentioned if they are top 300. So this is something that kind of similar to, I remember we talked a bit early in the days where, uh, you know, I think in PVE right now that works well because there is, additional rewards such as uh, 
planet construction things that can be easily sold. So maybe PVP would have something that's needed for the higher level players. Because right now the crystals are obviously undervalued. So therefore, there could be another thing that could people sell to the higher level players, you know, to the competitive players. So that's so not necessarily NFT, which I know NFT was before, but more something kind of uh, could be the energy elements, could be things that are, I think right now, given a one-off, but could be done as a, like, let's say they get some energy, right? It doesn't have a lot of value for them, but uh, competitive players might pay for that. So that's a easy solution where you don't have to add more GFTs, but add more uh, interest incentive to per, for people to participate. So it's all about participation to really sustain the dynamic. Anyway, that's, that's it for me. Okay, thank you. So like we can add more different rewards for top players, right? To make the game uh, more interesting. For, for lower players, adding more rewards that are not necessarily highly valued, like energy, but that would be meaningful for the top players. So top players might pay for it. So let's say... Oh, okay, I get, I get your point. The, okay. The top 300, he got two energy batteries. He might not use it, but he will sell it to the top players and top players will use it. Okay, I got your point on, I got you. Okay, I see star Z, okay, crypto fam Z. Okay. It's your time, my African friend. Uh, Hi. Thank you very much. Yeah. So um, I totally agree with with Art um, on his last suggestion. That's a, a pretty good one. Then I, I also want to um, talk about mining. I also want to talk about mining and rewards um, for people that stake their stock. Uh, currently, we have a limit of about nine stars for farming GFT. So, are there are there plans to actually increase this number in the future, especially for um, players that have uh, lower lower stars? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, most, most of the big guys have stars that have a mining power running into hundreds of thousands of um, of a mining um, ability. But the smaller players do not really have um, much deep power. So if if we could increase um, the number of stars that the players with lower, you know, deep power can actually use, so that they also can get GFT rewards, then I think that there might be more participation in that in that space as well. Then um, secondly, what I want to talk about is. Um, in terms of opportunities for skill-based competitions, which um, we're already running in terms of the PV and the PP, um, I don't know if there is a way for uh, smaller smaller players to, to, maybe we can have like a small players tournament kind of a thing where the big guys would not be allowed to participate um, because they, they usually have the upper end for the normal PV and PvP games. So if um, the smaller players actually have a sense of participation, also it might it might um, it might be good because some of them do not have um, super super rare stars. Some of them might not have the um, ultra rare stars. Many of them might just have. Um, the normal and then the the rest as so and it's difficult for them to compete in um, in the games so if we can have something that can accommodate the lower players and make them feel among i think it's it's also going to do well for for the, um, for the game oh i see so like you are suggesting that we should hold um, special tournaments for players at the lower rankings right yep yeah, I see. I see. Someone put forward that suggestions previously or like a long time ago. I remember that we should hold special tournaments for them or hold special tournaments for different rankings, right?
Okay, thank you so much, Crypto Femzi. Thank you, my African friend. So, who wants to speak next? Okay, Aunt, it's your time, Aunt. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just I actually completely agree. There should be a regular tournament every three months, every six months. In fact, back in the day, we discussed it.、Uh, some major event that happens where. The best players come together and battle. So maybe picking from each two-week tournament, you could pick the top three winners, and then after the season, you know, let's say one quarter, anyone like if they if you made it to top five or top ten,、uh, you picked, and then there is a battle happens, you know, on the arena. So we already have the functionality for remember the betting arenas. So the yeah we have, and then it could be like. So the tournament is actually already doable. It just all all has to be drafted up. It is chart, you know, how people elimination. You know, maybe top sixteen players or top thirty two players combined from every tournament every two weeks over three months. You know, so it's six tournaments, and you pick out of let's say top ten players or say or twenty players. You pick the people who won more, and then they all go to the competition, and then there is more. Rewards or whatever, special NFTs, something that make players、uh, get really excited and build up, build up the buzz naturally. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally, totally agree with you on that. Yes. So we have time. Who wants to speak? Starzy, I, I see you, Starzy. I see you, Tuan. <laughs> I know a little bit English. Okay. I see you guys. Who wants to speak? Just just press the button and raise your hand, and I can allow you to speak. You should voice out if you want a NFT reward or pop to mark this memorable moment of our second DAO meeting. Cool. Hello, 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 IOTEX lover. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Could you say something, or do you want to say something、um, in terms of how to increase the income for active players?、Uh, <laughs> don't I have any idea? <laughs> do, you don't have any idea. <laughs> Okay, just leave, leave, just leave out the floor to other creative okay. Okay. thinkers. Okay, thank you. Hi, Tuan. Do you get、uh, some ideas, Tuan or Stasi? Do you guys get some ideas for how to increase their income? Uh, he's ghetto again. Hello, hello again.、Uh, I have an idea、uh, regarding what uh, uh, Frenzy was saying about、uh, increasing the、uh, number of the stars that can mine for the low players.、Uh, for example, we can have like twenty, whatever, but make it、uh, limits for、uh, the digging power. You know, so not the big players come with the big.、Uh, Uh, big diggers and just like farm all the all the pool, so make it limited. You know what I mean? Like two hundred thousand, maybe maximum digging power, and no matter how much、uh, how much stars they can、uh, they can mine. Okay, okay. So so let let Starzy have a chance to voice his speak、uh, voice voice out. Okay, get、yeah. <laughs> Darcy wants to speak. Yeah. Hello, Darcy. Hello, hello. Hi, 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 guys. Nice to meeting you all here. So just、um, I joined late. Sorry about that. But I, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether anybody talked about increase the PVP、uh, rewards yet. If it's already, then then just ignore me because that's the only thing that I want to, to raise here、um, for the PVP because、uh, PVP 
it's uh, I think it's it's a good tool right now to um, to determine active players. <clears throat> if you're not active, you cannot climb to the top. Like let's say 50, you cannot. So for the guys within the top 50, should be already um, flat as um, as as uh, active players already. So we can already uh, focus to uh, increase the rewards right there. So in terms, we we gonna attract more people to come to the to, to the game. Besides all, all all other things that the that other players suggested. Oh, I see. <clears throat> Because right now, I, I understand that the GFT, together with other tokens in the bear markets, um, is not. It's um, the price in terms of in dollars worth is not that high, so mm -hmm. they don't care about TFT rewards right now. Um, most of the hype right now is it's about training ground that that keep players playing, keep playing, you know. But um, if we can consider to increase the rewards in terms of TFT for the PVP players, top players. Right there, then, then, then it's gonna be good too. And okay. also, yeah. And also, one one good idea from um, crypto um, MVA or so, um, we can also consider to to um, to increase mining rewards. This is not final, right? Um, but we lock half of them, so that means that the players can still have. The, the rewards in terms of GFT, but but uh, we can still limit the um, selling uh, pressure right there with locking mechanism, something like that. So that the two ideas. Okay, thank you, Starzy, for voicing out your ideas to let us hear right. you. Right. Thank you for having thank me. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Ace it, okay. Let you take this, take the stage. Ace it. Hello, hello, everyone. I was wondering, isn't there a possibility to reward um, people with collectibles that we are able to sell outside um, IOTEX? Oh, in fact, we are integrating with a an NFT platform right now, but we have a lot of development work to do to. Integrate with external NFT platforms. Yeah. Hmm. After Because after it... we inter yeah after in the integration, we will able to rent or uh, borrow NFTs or stars from other players to mine or to battle with each other. Yeah, but, I, I'm, but will it also be tradable? Because what I what I'm intending to say is that you you create some can create some kind of uh, play to own. Um, mechanism instead of play to earn where people can own collectibles but still can have the financial advantage of selling those for example outside um the iot uh, I, uh the the star star crazy uh, marketplace so i'm not not saying that we need to remove the the, the play to earn aspects but uh, maybe some special collectibles that the people Want to collect and if and if wants freely can trade it outside uh, the star um, star crazy uh, environment. Oh, you mean oh you you mean game items or? Hmm. Sorry. You mean game items? Yeah, game items uh, or, or 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 collectibles. Because from what I understood is that you you're integrating with a marketplace, but um, which will be mostly for. Um, Yeah, scholarships and, and, and stuff like that. Oh, But I, 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 I really mean the, the the free market outside um outside outside the game itself. But I'm not sure if something like that currently exists on uh, IOTEX. Oh, I see. I see. I, I get your point. I get your point. I see. Yeah, I, I didn't give it a lot of thought, but maybe something uh, you can... Um, Have a yeah, look I into it. Hear. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is something I've, I've, I'm not gonna chill another project, but I'm working on another project, and we're also moving towards uh, this kind of stuff where we 
yeah, reward people with uh, players with uh, yeah, nice collectibles that people really want want to own and um, and, voilà, and give them the total um, freedom to do whatever with it what they what they want. Okay, okay, I get it. I will mm. take this suggestion in my suggestion list to the development team. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Exit. Okay, thank you. So we still have time. We still have time. Who wants to speak? We still have time. Okay, Tuan, it is your time. Tuan, it is your time. I have been waiting for you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, just um, one thought. Um, the GFS reward for a planet owner being selected for the PVE. Uh, I'm wondering if the that could be increased because at the moment that's um, that's pretty low, and also the chance of getting a planet selected is also pretty low as well because the last PVE season for two months my planet wasn't even selected. So, um, and also, uh, if you guys can put in a mechanism for not the same planet to be selected like three or four times, because it happened last season, uh, PVE season, there was some some planet being selected like at least three times. Uh, so it's, you got to spread the fairness uh, across the board. Um, so that's uh, that's one of my thoughts. Um, the other thing is touching on what Star Z said about increasing um, the mining for the uh, Star Z, yeah, then having uh, some of that value locked in for a longer period, yeah, that's that's also a really really good idea because I spent a lot of time and a lot of uh, money on um, fusing my cats, and I got quite a lot of powerful cats now, uh, but. Uh, uh, you know the mine. The mining has been uh, cut by half, uh, which uh, I believe everyone collectively uh, voted for that. Um, I, I was in favour of that as well. But uh, I think it's time that uh, we look at a different mechanism uh, for that as well. And um, that's all for me. Yeah, yeah. We will look into different uh, various aspects to increase rewards f from like other aspect for PvP players. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. So here is one last chance for anybody who wants to uh, speak. Okay, okay. MC, you want to speak? Okay. Here is your time, MC. MC, hello. MC, you can turn on your mic to speak. Oh, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, hello, hello. Hey, hi. Um, I just want to say, I think the biggest problem right now with this game is that the features isn't very sufficient. Um, because for a normal player, without planet, you're, su you're seriously looking at just fusing and battling. That's all you do. And if you don't have a lot of, like, those cats, you don't really have anything much to play other than these two options at mining and fusing and at the certain time you don't have enough gft to fuse all you can do is sit and wait i think a lot of the engagement needs to cancel off the sit and wait kind of feature that's why i'm looking at um potentially having like side games that you can actually interact with like to keep people playing like the interactive side of things but you can earn potentially like just cosmetic cosmetic um nothing too fancy like you know the cosmetic feature on the items you don't need to have the powerful items to to boost your cat right but you could have cosmetic because big players do you pay for those and you can generate more on the economy by having those cosmetic it could be a rare cosmetic that you can change the looks of your cat for example um if you have a scroll to change for example you don't like horns on your cat but you like the feature so you can change the color, change something else. So you can design your own cat. You get more of the, I would say, personalization of the cat. And that will actually keep people playing because those um, players that need to earn, right, they will spend the time to actually farm for those items and then sell it to the bigger players. 
and the bigger players would be happy to pay because they don't want to waste time farming for those items that it's just for cosmetic, you know? You get what I mean? Yeah, I got, I got you, MC. Yeah, I think making our stars customizable is can make our game really uh, more interesting and attractive to other players since they get options to decorate their and that, stars. That actually would, yeah, that actually would solve the issue for for the smaller players like our sound that wants to actually just spend more time, but we have less money on our hands, right? But we have more time and that we can invest our time to actually create work for ourselves to work for the bigger players who is willing to spend that generous economy right now that isn't that because all we do is fuse and at some point that we, we have they, they they have enough cats we don't have to sell it to them anymore and they and then they could also do it themselves because they could just spend money to fuse the cats right but if you give items that is cosmetic and you need to actually spend time to get those items Big players don't want to spend time. They want to spend money to, to for their. They want to spend time on something else, not just farming. Yeah. So you need the farming expert. That happens to all the MMO or RPG games outside, where like the smaller player would just keep farming and the big player would just spending. Yeah, you you spend money to buy time from others. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Okay. Thank you, MC. Thank you. Okay, so we got many speakers tonight, and we heard so many thought-provoking ideas for the team to look into. Some of those ideas um, may be selected as the next style proposal for you to vote. And here's a question: that how we can vote in our DAO. So, for you, for you who don't know how to vote in our DAO, here is the steps that you can cast your vote. So, first, hold GFS or buy some if you don't have, and second. Go to our exclusive DAO space through the link in the slide, snapshot org linkstar.eth. Then you cast your vote to choose the option you like. That is super, super easy. And last, we come to the Q&A session. So you guys can ask or say or suggest anything you want um, regard to or not regard to the topic we discussed tonight. So I will leave the floor out to you guys again. And you can raise your hand if you want to ask or suggest something you want. You can just raise your hand and I will allow you to speak. Um, I'm just agreeing with Toan. I think that was a very good point, a well thought out point that uh, allowing the skins. And it also, it kind of solves. So remember in the beginning when um, we were launching, we tried to do that with Pioneer and then people ultimately wanted functionality. Uh, so I think, uh, so just by itself, just giving out the cards, maybe not as effective, but as giving it and then they get change the look of the uh, uh, the look of the star while uh, allowing for you know players without the money to actually play and engage more is perfect like yeah I lo love that solution so that's it just that was the big one for me very good one okay thank you on for your very inspiring idea so who wants to speak just raise your hand or want to ask something about the team or about me or anything about Star Crazy or about training grounds that we are about to launch. 
in like in the near future maybe at, at the, uh, yeah but at the end of this month raise your hand if you want to speak this is the last chance if you want to ask or say anything to the team or me or yeah ask anything you want to ask or do you have any uh, questions for the team you can let me know Or you can, or you can say it in the main group that I can hear you. Uh, I can notice your message. Yes, Johnny, Hi. there's a few. Yeah, there's a few guys that wants to speak. I don't think maybe you don't see it. I think uh, uh, Tuan want to speak as well. Okay, my thing is just the uh, PVE session. We voted for the PVP to be shorter. Uh, I was just wondering what are the other guys feeling of making the PVE also shorter? Uh, and then another thing is that would be interesting is uh, for increasing the amount of play or make it more excited as if we can fuse books is it not possible to fuse buff cards it will make the buff cards so much more valuable i mean if you can fuse that it will limit it, the amount of buff cards that's there if you can fuse it and it will be so much more valuable than eventually as well it will be unique everyone should have a unique type of thing with different uh attributes as well that's just my uh, my opinion uh pv pvp duration and something nice for the buff cards. Okay, I think I, I, I get your point. Like when you are asking for some special rewards for the players, right? No, no, no. I'm talking about fusing, fusing of the buff cards. You see, you fuse books. It's just a, ah, a, a, I see, a, I see, a, I see. The deaf teams maybe can... Uh, uh, and then that will make it more challenging if nobody knows what, and uh, maybe you had the op opportunity to fuse it, and then the amount of buff cards will be so limited and more valuable then. And then another oh, one is I see. PV, 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 PVE duration. Uh, the two months is, is quite a bit of a long time. Uh, is it okay, or uh, should we shorten that as well? Yeah, that should be. That could be our next DAO. Uh meeting theme yeah or the next style proposal yeah um for anyone who anybody wants to speak you just uh, you can raise your hand right here or you can type in the main group if you want to speak in case i didn't see you raising your hand uh when is travel cat game coming um, I think it will be uh, our tra our travel frog. Tra the the travel cat game is still available now. You mean for stars to travel along uh, among different planets? We are, uh, okay. We are developing the interstellar mines right now, f in which your stars can travel to different planets to loot the minds of uh, planet owners, maybe. Yeah, okay. Okay, Tuan, okay, I will let you speak. I will let you speak. Hi, Tuan. Yeah, hi. Yeah, um, going, going back to the, the training ground, let's say when we fuse our stars and, and we're lucky and we get uh, some sort of upgrade. Yeah? Now, 
would our dig power also increase or improve? Um, I think upgrading your stars in the training ground has nothing to do with your dig power. Yeah, right, it's it's right. all about learning learning skills, learning skills and documenting skills on a skill book, identifying skills skill books to um, get them a skill. Right, right. So it's a totally different mechanism. Right. Okay. Okay. That's uh, okay. That's um, that's all. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Duan. Yeah, we, we will have tutorial videos coming for everyone to understand how training grounds work. Don't worry. Okay. This is your last chance to voice out. Do you guys have anything to ask or say? You can also type in the main group and I, I can see your question or suggestion. Graphic interface. Uh, yeah, I, I get your point, MC. Um, for now, our priority is to develop Star, star Crazy. Of course, we will hire more graphic designers or maybe some skillful artists when the market recovers. When we saw like Bitcoin climbing up to 30,000, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, but, but for now, our top priority is to check the game for any bugs or problems or fix them as soon as possible. Yes. So, do you guys want to speak or suggest anything? This is your last chance to speak or ask the team about anything or ask me about anything. Hi, Godwin. Hi, Godwin. You can speak now. Just for the training grounds, will every all the planet owners be able to train on their planets? Yeah, you can train on your planet, and also you can allow others train on your planet by setting up a fee for them to train. Yeah, but for them to. Be, yeah, yeah, please yeah, go but ahead. Be, yeah, but before it was said, you must have that slot, one slot per. Uh, so then you mine on your planet. So will you still be able to, to, to train or allow somebody to train in your planet? That's, that's for the smaller planets, the SR planets. And that was, that, that was my point right in the beginning that everyone should be able to do that. Uh, the other guy should just maybe have more uh, to gain in it, but everyone should be able to do that. Thanks, Johnny. Okay, I see. Okay, okay. Okay, this is our last part of the meeting, which is the Q&A session. So we just had a wonderful night by spending our time in joining this second DAO meeting. So what a wonderful guy, what, what a wonderful night we have, guys. We are truly appreciate that you can join our second DAO meeting tonight. We will distribute Jeff S airdrops as well as Pops airdrops for speakers very soon. So see you next time, guys. Remember to join our third meet, third down meeting in the near future. Glad to see everybody here. Glad to see Crypto FMZ here. Glad to see Tukasam here. Glad, glad to see Godwin is here. Yeah. Glad, glad to see Ghetto Doom again. And we are glad to see MC here for the first time. We are glad to see Tuan like several times, I guess, maybe. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining this meeting. This meeting will end now.